Is it some devil that crawls inside of you? That goes in and post. Hi, how Hi. you doing, everybody? Welcome back to the Map Brain Podcast. Hi, everybody. I'm one of the hosts, Dallas Bronson, and I'm joined here by David Iglesias. David Iglesias. Nice. The one and only. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yeah, how are how, you? I'm fucking sweaty. I'm happy to be rolling right now. I, I may or may not have Map Brain. Let's uh, let's see how this goes. I'm pretty sure I do. I can tell. Like, <laughs> there's not a whole lot swimming out, or swimming around up there. I um, 100% have Map Brain right now. Yeah. Did you listen to the first episode by chance? A hundred percent. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. So for those of you who don't know what Matt Brain is, refer back to the first episode or just bear with me on this quick little rundown. Matt Brain is, uh, to some effect, um, cognitive skipping you have after training jujitsu. And this is what we have. And one day I was just in the gym and I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I forgot my keys. I'm like putting my sandals on before I put my pants on, just looking like an idiot, just like not knowing what I'm doing. I'm so exhausted. It's just something that I always had post jujitsu, post training. I just had some sort of like validation of like, I like you just went through something and need to, need to connect with the people around you, but you don't have the like function functionality to do it in that moment. You know what I mean? A hundred percent. That's the perfect definition of map brain. Good, because I hope I hope that like in layman's terms, you you knocked it out of the park. That's me, Mr. Layman, um, <laughs> Mr. Layman. Oh, um, good job on those freaking those triangles from top. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just uh, I was just told that it was a thing you could do, mm-hmm. and I said uh, let's try it. Yeah. Unsuccessfully, but we'll get there. Dude, you like you had me. My head stuck for like a good minute or two. It was it wasn't fun. It was very close. It's very no. Close. It's not a fun place to be. No, it's a horrible place. And to he be. just showed you those, and you tried it on me, Jason, and just and Jordan and Jordan. Yeah, and I'll get it one of these days. Dude, it's it's so cool. Like when you get this is essentially like a private. You know what I mean? Because it's like yeah. so um, one-on-one. Very, yeah, very it's, hands-on. It's a two and a half hour private lesson and it's amazing yeah i mean we're doing like some training some videos some tutorials because of this fucking corona virus we all have hazmat suits on yeah with our belts to be fair mm-hmm. they're ranked ranked hazmat, ranked suits. hazmat suits <laughs> that's good i like that <sighs> man how'd you get started uh training jujitsu uh my son actually my wife was looking to get my son into some sort of martial art Mm -hmm. and uh word around town was the school was opening up so she enrolled him and uh a month prior to that i had enrolled in the gym right next door oh really and I was like, oh, I'm going to start working out. I'm going to get into shape. I'm 34 mm. years old. I got to do something. You're 34? Yeah. Man, you look great. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I appreciate I thought, that. I would have thought you were closer to my age. Which is? 24. Nice. <laughs> that made my day. All right. <laughs> now I'm getting more comfortable. Um, so I was leaving the gym, and I was walking by, and Jason was in here. And uh, it was probably right before the noon class. And I just came in, and I started talking to him. And then I signed up right there. Nice. And then I, so I had left the gym. Walked over here, talked to Jason, walked back to the gym, canceled my gym membership. Nice. So, so th- for those of you who aren't here, don't know where we're at, there's this cool little complex with four buildings, and there's this courtyard in the middle, and each corner of these buildings is different gyms, essentially. To the left of us is a powerlifting gym called Cold Iron Barbell, and then there's this like other kind of more like mainstream-style gym. Which is where I was. Which is where you were. Um, I had had powerlifting buddies they would go over there and had a lot of trouble with them. So me personally, just on like a p- totally biased standpoint, I'm glad you're not over there. Sure. And then I trained no gi kickboxing and boxing over here. I did not even know that's there. Is that still there? Um, it's still there. They don't have no gi though. Okay. So yeah, they, I've never they, even it, heard of that. Yeah. They're um, super fantastic. It's how I started my martial arts journey essentially is um, just kind of helping her out with kids classes over there and doing boxing and, holding pads for people and then taking kickboxing and then eventually um it, it, it's owned and operated by the high school wrestling coaches okay so first. it's not a, it's not an adult there's no adult classes there are, you know there are adult classes absolutely okay and that's where i had taken 
they like they still have them and you know i mean for right now no one has any classes because of this coronavirus this is a <laughs> a um what'd you call it a uh particularly a, a, a real bummer really definitely a real freaking <laughs> bummer but just That's like what i call it a real privilege to train today yeah absolutely I, I haven't trained in four or five days and when you're training consistently four or five days feels like an eternity yeah absolutely like Absolutely. when I take weekends off, I come back and I'm like, holy shit, what happened last week? I totally forgot. This is a, you know, rarely because throughout the week, I don't take more than a day off. No, I try to, I try to go at least four days. Yeah. Three to four. Monday through Friday. I try to go at least four days. Mm-hmm, absolutely. So I'll usually, I would, I would skip Tuesdays just to give myself like, I got the Monday, like cobwebs off Tuesday, just relax. And then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I can really go for it. And then if I'm feeling agile, open mat Saturday. Absolutely. I'll go Monday, Tuesday, and if I have to, I'll skip Wednesday. Mm-hmm. It's a 7 o'clock class, yeah. and then I have to be at work by yeah. 4 a.m., so Oof. that cuts it a little close, but I'll still go through it if I have and to. I have to be wor- at work at uh, 11 p.m. What's up, fellas? Yeah. Coach Jason, what's Jason's up? Jason's in the house. Yeah, what's up, Absolutely. Boys? What's happening? Grab a seat. Grab a freaking mic. Hang out. Yeah, how do we do this? Do we, do we just share mic? Yeah. Get, get yeah. super close? Just if you're talking. Yeah, no, it's fine. That's well, fine. I want to hear what Jason has to say, so I can... Absolutely. Jason, grab I can, that I can mic pass the headphones over, too, if you'd like. No, you wear the headphones. I'll okay. Yeah, he's like, I don't want yeah. your sweaty fucking ears <laughs> <Yeah>. on me. <my laughs> I don't need your ears. What are we talking to here? Um, we talking well, here? I had asked him what started his jiu-jitsu journey, um, and he had mentioned the gym he was at previous and having his son enrolled here and then trading over after talking to you guys, and I had explained, like, what a cool area this is because we have all these gyms in the surrounding area yep. and how my martial arts journey started right there. Yeah, I don't even know if Jason knows that I had just told him when I first came over here, I came from the gym. Yep. And then after I left talking to you, I walked right back over to the gym and canceled my membership to Did sign up really? here. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Let me borrow this microphone. Absolutely. We're going to play microphone pass back. So uh, that's funny you should say that because I remember the day you came in here and you had just been working out next door at that gym. And you just told me your son Rylan was training here, your wife signed him up, and you were interested in training in the program. There was something about you that stood out. And I'm not just saying this because you're right here. I'm saying this because it's the truth. It's true. Like, I don't know what you're about to say, but there's uh, an aura about you. And I don't use that term lightly because I think it's kind of hooey. But it's true. There's something. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was clear as day. You had something that was just radiating about you, radiating about you in a very good way. You looked radiant, David. um, I think that what, what I see the most... and. You know, maybe this is it, maybe this isn't it, but I, I see a lot of dads that come in here and they see their kids train on the mat and they see how much fun their kids are having and how engaged their kids are are in that class. And that kind of lights a fire inside of the parent in a way that's they're like, Wow, I want that feeling. I wanna I wanna feel as good as my son does on that mat. And yeah. this looks like a lot of fun. So let me try it. And then you get on the mat and you try it, and that's history. The question sometimes comes back to people and Dallas asked me last time, when was the first time you knew that jujitsu was affecting your life? Something along those lines. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, the second time I went to class. Second time you went to class. Yeah. That's when things in my life were interfering with my jujitsu. And I was like, this is my second class. I got to reevaluate my whole life. <laughs> Cut out all the nonsense. I just have time for jujitsu. Yeah, we've talked about that quite a bit, how it, it just makes you want to be a better person all the way around. Yeah. Uh, the way you eat, the way you treat people the way you push yourself mm-hmm. every day it's 100 percent true yeah here, it gonna, truly oh, works I'm... you guys because the two people i'm sitting next to were both just came in here haggard and sloshed and big old long untrimmed beards <laughs> swirly what is this place jujitsu i'm gonna try it and here they are today fine citizens of america that's absolutely true <sighs> thank you but i knew what jujitsu was I had never trained properly in a gi, like in the academy before. Um, so this was an exciting like opportunity to have somewhere like a home base, you know what I mean? Right. Like somewhere I can consistently train. Like this is a dream come true. This is what I was looking for for so long. And over the past two or three years was having a really hard time finding a consistent training schedule or a consistent training partner. And I mean, this is, I couldn't ask for a better place. I mean, I could, but I'd be, spo- I'm, I'd be spoiled. You know what I mean? Yeah, jiu-jitsu diva. Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with this mic. Excuse me. 
<laughs> well, thanks for those kind words, Dallas. This place is pretty cool. We've done a good job, and you guys, you know, like I said, we we uh, we provided the dream, but you guys made it come true. You know, we have mats, but with mm-hmm. without people, without people that are committed to themselves, um, we're just a gym with mats on the floor. You guys are what make this place fire off. You guys create the energy. You know, we just set the tone, and uh, it's cool. We've been really enjoying everything we have with you guys and all of our members. Except for this darn corona <laughs> this virus. Dang coronavirus, this COVID-19. dude. COVID-19. Am I yelling too loud? No, I you're perfect. Myself, you can so. choke up on the mic. Um, speak in the top of it right speak there. Speak in the top? Yeah, that's perfect. Hello, check, check. Yeah, one, that, two. That, that is totally clear. That's where I need it. That's perfect. Okay, perfect. I'm just yeah. going to hold this thing up to my mouth like this and talk. That, that's the appropriate thing. Um, I came in this thing kind of late, so I really want to just step back and touch on a few things. Please do. If this is your second time listening to the podcast, I want to do a few things real quick. You guys know who I am. Um, what I say is what I believe. And when I say it, sometimes I have map brain, so please forgive me if I sound like an idiot from time to time, but I do my best. I want to make a correction from something I said on my last podcast with you, Dallas. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we'll get to that later. Let me, let me just come up with a couple things, and then we'll touch back, and I'll go back and correct a few things from our last podcast. Please. Um, but like I said, you guys know who I am. If you're listening to it and you don't like me, don't listen. Right? Same goes for me. <laughs> yeah. But he's, uh, Jason, you're, um, I like to think of you as like the co-host, you know? Like I don't think of like one of us being like the main host. I think of this as like our show, like I really appreciate Or even just like your show that I get to help do. You know what I mean? Like I really appreciate having a podcast about something that I hold near and dear. And you're a fantastic, like the first time on the mic, the first episode, you did so well, I thought you had done it before. I was like, this dude has podcasts. This dude knows what, this dude listens. He knows how to talk, he's good on the mic. And I think it just comes from your aptitude as an instructor, coach, and public speaker in that fashion. It went really well. And how the heck did this mic get down here? You guys watching this fall this whole time? Didn't say anything. I don't know what's going on. Sorry. I've been I've ears. been just doing nothing but staring intently into your eyes. Thank you. I'm too off in the nowhere. I've got map brain too really hard right now. So I thought that's what it was supposed to do. Yeah. No. Absolutely. Please stare into my big poopy brown holes of eyes. Brown eyes. <sighs> you have some nice brown eyes, Dallas. Thank you. Dave, will you hold this mic? Absolutely. Corrections. David, what's your favorite submission? Whether it being done on you or done to they're, someone, they or just always seeing. they always seem to be done on me. Mm, that's, these our, days. that's our lot um, in life is uh, white belts. Yeah, that uh, that triangle that we were just working mm-hmm. on it's it's my new goal. So new goal. I, I cannot wait for for this place to open back up so I can mm-hmm. just try it because I've never even seen it done that way before, and uh, I, I really want to get that dialed in. Absolutely. I uh, hope you don't dial it in on me, but <laughs> it's got to be someone unsuspecting. So I it's think cool. It's really got a whole class. Yeah, it's interesting when people like have a whole new um, entry into a submission, like because like everything is so new to us as white belts. Like yeah. even though like I've had prior experience, like there's so many fundamentals that I'm like picking up, and I'm like, oh, you hook the leg before you bridge right. to okay. I'm like, all right, just it's, all kinds of little things. It's so technical that it, it's so much to take in, especially somebody like me who I have no experience at all. So I, I signed you, up in December. How so? You signed up in December. You hadn't that's tra- it. Hadn't, hadn't trained prior to that at no, all. Dude, nothing. You're, you are very talented. Thank you. It, it shows when I roll with you because it feels like you've been rolling for a good while, no. a while longer than you have been. And I think that just uh, speaks to how consistent you've been and to how, you know, focused you are. Like, you're just a good learner. You I have appreciate like, that. S- some athleticism to you. So I was really, it's, it's, it's a trip. Cause, um, he had mentioned like whatever, um, was radiating, radiating off you then maybe <laughs> it's just, you had that great, uh, post-workout glow, but it's it's not hard to notice. Like when we're in class, it's just something in your eyes. I just I just know there's something there's something in there somewhere. It might be evil, but it's there. It, well, I'm looking forward to bringing it out. <laughs> not the evil thing, but the bring bring the a little evil skill. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm I don't have any, so I'm waiting to find don't some say eventually. That. Don't say that. You're insanely good. <sighs> don't make my head any bigger. I keep getting caught in chokes and <laughs> bow and arrows. It's it's horrible. Yeah, but you're learning every you single know what? time. You know what, Jason, though? I got out of 
Jordan's bow and arrow. Impossible. And I looked at you <laughs> and I flipped you off. And I went, really take that, bitch. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. But I, I thought about it, and I was like, I wish Jason saw that. Nobody saw it, and Jordan will not admit to it. No, absolutely. He, no, he was like, hey, dude, nice. You let, he's like, good job. You knew where I was going with that. And I was like, it's only because Jason's done it once a week for three months straight yeah, to exactly. me. So I'm very aware of it. You know, speaking of flipping off, I had a little guy in our Tiny Champs class the other day look to his dad and flip his dad off in the middle of class. That was pretty interesting. <laughs> Trying to hold back the composure was tough. <laughs> no joke. I mean, this kid just cold stare, like st- like stone cold Steve Austin stare, you know, or uh, who was it? The Rock. You know how he has that smothering yeah. look? Smolder. Yeah. Smolder. Uh, yeah. Smolder. Uh, yeah. It was just like the Smolder, man. And he looks over at his dad, just flips him the bird right in the middle of class. I was like, oh my gosh. I didn't even knew what that meant when I was his age. I don't think he did either. Okay. I think he just okay. meant like, hey, dad, check this out. And like, there it was. <laughs> All right. Well, that happened. Rylan had a bruise on his middle finger, and he was showing – all of the juniors and teens uh-huh. his fingers so he's walking around just flipping all of them off and he has no idea what he's doing they're cracking up it's very very funny <laughs> that is funny man sometimes the kids what they do in class is out of this world it there it always makes for a good time yeah there's always one kid in class that does something extremely hilarious and it, everybody gets a kick out of it i, I i've personally i I've never uh, seen a kid's class. I try to avoid children. I think they're gross and smelly and weird, and I'm still quite a child myself in my head because I'm, you know, 24. Like, I'm still, like, I live at home with my mom. Like, I'm definitely, like, I'm a kid. I don't want to be around other kids. I want to be at the big boys. Um, But I totally understand how there's – you get to see all these individual personalities grow and shape, and you get to see, like, some of them shine through in really, like, eclectic ways, like flipping their dad off. And (laughs) it's really funny. I love that. It's it, it's it's really cool when you're out at the grocery store and all of a sudden you hear, hey, Coach Jason, mm-hmm. and you turn around and there's some of your students, you know, and they're like, what's going on? Hey, buddy, what are you doing here? Getting some chocolate milk or something <laughs> like that. Just something simple. But you see them out and they, they recognize you as Coach Jason or Coach David, Coach Tom, you know, all these different mm-hmm. coaches we have, like they look at them and it, it just makes you feel makes you feel good as yeah. a person. You know, you know what? You're I bet doing something for these your kids. coaching is a huge reason why you've gotten so good so quick because it's a great way to learn is by teaching others. Yeah, absolutely. I think that absolutely like, because you're teaching children, there's a lot of fundamentals involved. It's probably explains a whole lot, not, not to take anything away from your no, like natural no, you're, talent, you've, you but hit the nail on the head. It's okay. absolutely true. It slows everything down and it, it's a different vantage point, I guess. It, it yeah, does. It no, helps, I, it helps quite a bit. Get a good perspective. Teaching, teaching and training uh, or coaching and training is so important to your training in total, you know. So if you have the ability to coach in an academy, um, that's going to help your training, you know, go through the roof because it slows down the technique and makes you think about it step for step. You know, what are the steps I had to take to get here? Um, you count them out sometimes, you know, step mm-hmm. one, step two, step three. And then you're constantly teaching that technique maybe two, three, four times a day, you know. So you at that point, it really re- reiterates it in your head so you can do the technique yeah. properly, you yeah. know. But then training is also very important. You have to be able to train the technique that you're teaching. Drillers make killers. Drillers make killers. But there's also something to that too, in my opinion. If you're just drilling slow and you're allowing the person – to do that drill, like mm-hmm. let's say we're going to do 10 arm bars. Mm-hmm. I'm going to do 10 arm bars to you. You're mm-hmm. going to do 10 arm bars to me. If I feed you those arm bars, then you're not really going through the proper movements to get to it. So use. But if I use enough resistance, not like stupid resistance where mm-hmm. I just make it impossible for you yeah. to do it, but I give you some resistance so that you actually have to work for it. Like if we're going to drill a technique, you need to drill that technique. You mm-hmm. need to train hard. You need to push yourself. You need to go through the steps to get there don't let me give it to you. You know, like when you see those drills in class, okay, we're going to do 10 triangles, you Mm -hmm. know, and be a good partner and then put yourself in the triangle for your partner. Yeah. What? That doesn't make any sense. At first, but then incrementally. Let's do do 20 of them. Yeah. And then the first five are going to be, you're going to give them to your partner. And then, you know, 
you're just going to start to slowly get tougher and tougher and tougher and more resistance mm -hmm. every single time, a little bit more resistance every time, a little bit more resistance every time. Um, because that's a problem I've seen where guys are like, yeah, you're an awesome driller. Like you can drill arm bars like nobody, you know, it's like shadow boxing. I'm going to shadow box. And this guy, you're watching him out the street. Like we look out the window and see some guy shadow boxing with himself, just boom, 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 boom. And we're like, whoa, I bet you that guy messed somebody up. Yeah. But the minute somebody actually steps up to him, he can't fight. Yeah, that's, uh, sadly true. There was someone I knew at this boxing gym who had had a couple fights and he's a terrifying shadow boxer trained really into it was very intimidating totally shredded and then um he had difficulty piecing it together in the ring yeah and i totally see where that comparison the parallel there because if you don't have the resistance if you can't finish it i i still have a lot of trouble as a white belt just you know it's gonna be there for a little while longer you know um, i still have a lot of trouble finishing arm bars it to me, I'm like, oh, and this is where I grab it to the chest and I roll back with it. But the, the, the people, they're resisting. They don't want their arm broken. They don't want their right. elbow messed up. They're, they're resisting. And I'm like, oh, I don't. Now what do I do? He gave too much resistance. I If I would have just trained it better or if I, you, you have training partners that are good training partners and giving you an appropriate amount of resistance so you learn it, I'd probably be a, a lot better off. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, if you really want to know how to do an arm bar properly, just ask David because he can tell you how to do it. He's did it to me like 30 times the other day. That's not true. <laughs> That's I'm not sorry. true. That's not true. Jason arm barred me 38 times last Friday over and over and over again. Even when he had another submission, he threw that one to the side and, and went for the arm bar. Did he uh, get you in a triangle and still arm bar you? He could have. Could have? He could have. That's, but my, that's my favorite. He get didn't get me in an arm bar today. He did not. I so. Did not. That's, that's true. And I don't know if he was just being nice, mm. but I'm going to say he... He's probably got sick of him. He's like, I've done so many damn arm bars <laughs> on David. I'm not going to... So, so I, I like to think bars. I learned something, <laughs> and I didn't give it to him this time. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I, I Good tried. for you. I tried. That's a great way to learn. Like, I uh, unfortunately still can't avoid bow and arrow chokes with him. But I did escape one today, and it was the first one I ever successfully escaped. Allegedly. Like, intentionally. Allegedly. Yeah. <laughs> Jordan totally gave it to me. He's like, go ahead, white belt. Um, and I'm proud of it. I'm stoked. I'm excited. But I know exactly how you feel with arm bars, but I think it's a little worse when your senses are getting cut off. Because yeah. he's choking you. It's the worst. He's looking at me like, I'm going to bone arrow you again, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Calling in for a secret private secret training session and i'm gonna wake up 10 10 minutes into it what the hell happened that's right <laughs> so what um what was something you wanted to correct from the first episode there just pass it on over all right you guys so uh map brain causes some um confusion in the brain we talked about that last time so uh marcio fatosha i called you mario i'm sorry mario because mm. you're not mario you're marcio and i knew that uh, so Marcio, I apologize for calling you Mario. And I said something as well last time about being at a point in your life where if you don't like what you're doing, don't do it. That's a quote straight from Dean Lister. Yeah. Pulled that off okay. of a motivational video that I used to watch time and time again for jujitsu. Dean Lister said it the best. If you don't like what you're doing, don't do it. Okay. I heard that a lot and I never, I was always that guy that was like, yeah, easy for some people to say, you know, yeah, just walk away from your full-time career. Mm. I've got a kid and a wife and a full-time life that I can't really walk away from, you know, so what happens if I walk away? There's always a what if. Yep. You just got to do it. And Dean Lister said it the best. I just paraphrase him. Mm. If you don't like what you're doing, don't do it. Yeah. Change it. He also has another one of my favorite quotes. Um, Why would you ignore 50% of the human body? Yep. And uh, John Donaher kind of based the whole leg lock uh, assassination after that. That's right. That's right. I mean, he's right, though. It's 50% of our body. You got all these different leg angles that you can go with, heel hooks, straight leg locks, you know, knee bars. The whole world is oh, available yeah. to you when you go down there. I just learned what a dog bar was. I had to look that up. and I was like, That's a 10th planet thing, isn't it? No, I don't think so because I saw it in a gi. Um, oh, wow. It was just a, it's just a knee bar variation. Do you know what it is? Nope. Okay, um, it's just a knee bar, just um, face to face. So instead of um, opposite, you know what I mean? Instead yeah. Of, instead of sixty nine, yeah. um, face to face. Okay. So uh, I'll try to demonstrate. Demonstrate if you want. It, I won't get it 
because yeah. you know you know why. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah, I remember. I, <laughs> I do why. bow and arrow why. victim. <laughs> but um, those submissions are badass, by the way. The ones where you look the person in the eye when you're submitting them, you're just <sighs> like, yeah, how does this feel? I, hey, I Dallas, know. Can I, you tell me how this feels? No, you can't. I, I'm choking you right now. I had a moment. That's so funny. Before I trained here, I had a really beautiful moment where I was getting choked over there in, in Nogi, and we had this like eye lock moment. That's so interesting. You said that. I'll never forget that. That's a it, you t- you connect with people on yeah. these mats in a violent way and in a personal way, in a humorous way. Um, there's so many beautiful like connections you can make on the mat, and eye contact is one of them. Yeah, yeah. It's it's. You're very, you can be very intimate with a person on these mats, Mm -hmm. you know, and I think that's where the, a lot of the bonds come from, you know, and the mat brain comes out, you know, all of a sudden you train really hard and, um, your dopamine levels are firing off. And that bonds everyone. That's a camaraderie. You can't replicate just anywhere. No, no. It's, you have to really put yourself out there, you know, like when you're in these positions, I mean. Let's be real for a second. You start in somebody's closed guard. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a position that to the average person is a funky looking position. Yeah, it looks uncomfortable. Right? You're you're in between someone's legs. They're locked on you. It it's yep. an, the first time you're in jujitsu. It's uncomfortable. Hundred percent. Especially when you mix genders and you're like, oh, I don't know how comfortable this can be, and it really breaks down um, your personal boundaries and makes you more comfortable as a person. Yep. And um, Coach Tom had mentioned something. I had said on the first podcast about how I feel like more comfortable, like walking around in public, a little more confidence, you know, just like there's like not this air of vulnerability that was there anymore. Right. Um, that breeds it. That helps it a lot. Like I don't feel so uncomfortable with human contact anymore. I don't feel so intimidated around people just because they might look one way or another. And um, that's one of those things where you're in compromising positions, otherwise uncomfortable positions, you know? Yep. yep breaks it down try north south position yeah oh i still like uh i i had practiced some north south prior to joining this academy and i refused to get any better at it because i was so uncomfortable with it because i'm like i'm dropping my hips on this dude's face this is not awesome or comfortable it might smell down there it's a it's it's not fun it's a real thing guys yeah. listen up at home when you th- that's that's real it if you're new to jujitsu and you wonder about some of the what ifs in jujitsu, um, that's real. North south positions, um, you know, side control positions. You're going from you know north south to this side control on the left, and then you're going back to the right. You guys, if you're questioning whether or not you need to go home and shower after you leave work before you go train jujitsu, go shower, go home, take a shower, go to jujitsu. It's always um, a safe bet. Even, always a safe bet. Yeah. And don't wear your gi twice. Wash your gi, take your gi home, wash mm-hmm. it, and then come back with a clean uniform. Same thing goes for your rash guards yeah. and your feet. Wash your feet. Yeah, sincerely. I've tried wearing a gi jacket two days in a row because I was like, eh, it was just, you know, a calm class. We didn't really do any much rolling after thinking I could get away with it. But still, the oils and the smells and sweat on my body a- attached itself to this fabric, and it stunk, and it was like, really embarrassing and i had to stop in the middle of class and go change and into a, another like less preferred gi right because of it and it's not it's not awesome well, it, absolutely like cleanliness is important if you can have something going for you have it going for you 100 percent. that's true yeah and you're not you're not just dealing with your sweat on there you're dealing with other people's sweat you yeah. know so the minute you take your sweat and then you mix my sweat and then you mix david's sweat we now have three I people's should, should, sweat on top of that ghee that's right i should take it off of this chair yeah and then <laughs> it's gonna dry and then when it dries you put it on you wear it again and then it just kind of re it reopens it yeah it reopens it it opens uh, it back nasty up odors. It activates all the the oils in there man yeah not good that's another thing guys my grammar is not that great so if i say something and i think it means one thing but it actually means something else shame on me i apologize oh, and also hopefully if you can articulate some thumbs enough to find a podcast on your smartphone you could also um understand what we're trying to articulate ourselves true you know and if that didn't make sense it, uh, we just chalk it up to Matt Brain. Like I said previously, all my podcasts just have built-in excuses. Matt Brain, oh, I could just say something stupid, bad etiquette. I could just say something rude and dumb, and I don't have to answer for it. Yep. 
Um, was that really all that you had to correct? That wasn't too that was, egregious. Well, no, there, I think there was a couple more. I think that because I have like legit map brain mm-hmm. right now from training, yeah. um, some things have gone out the window. But um, I knew that, you know, after right after I said uh, Marcio's name, I was like, oh, whoops, my bad. I'll correct that on the next one. It's it's so, um, in, it, yeah. So that was one thing. And then Dean Lister was another thing, you know, because I pulled that off a video. I didn't come up with that. I'm not a genius when it comes to stuff like Mm -hmm. that. You know, what I say is stuff I've gone through in life, whether I've watched it through a video, whether I was been inspired by it from this motivational video, from this motivational speaker, Mm -hmm. it's all stuff that I speak from my heart and it's what I believe. So, you know, I don't expect me to say something and everybody else to believe it or, Mm -hmm. you know, but I'm just saying it because it's fun. Like we're here doing this together, having fun. Um... And that's it, you know? That's good. I You come off really sincere, and I think that's important if you want to convince anything, anyone of how important jujitsu is to us. David, do you want to add anything? You're sitting over there being yeah, a fantastic you're just listening. listener. You are a good listener. <laughs> I'm glad to be here listening to you guys because you guys sound very professional. It's insane to me the level of professionalism you guys put out with this podcast and I've never done this before either and I just feel like a big dum dum because not at all. If I'm here I have Matt brain. If I'm at home I have dad brain so I feel like I just constantly can't articulate Good anything shot. ever. <laughs> the, the like professionalism aspect is literally just um like a foundation to build so our personalities can come out. Right. You know what I mean? Like what's I don't I don't I don't want someone to sound super uh freaking what do you call it? What's like up? what's up? You know, stilted. Hey guys, you know. Are you guys allowed to be on podcasts? Are you guys wanted by the yeah. NBA or anything like that? Or the <laughs> ATF? I don't know. ATF. Never mind. <laughs> come in, What's up, boys? Yeah, come, come sit down, in. guys. Yeah. Save don't me anything, from sounding really, really dumb. You've been on, you've been here the whole time. <laughs> Quiet. It's true. Over here in the corner the whole time. <laughs> all right, these are all these fantastic coaches I have in my life. We have Coach Jason, obviously, and Coach David, and Coach Tom, and Coach Jordan. And I got to roll with going. Coach Jordan today, and that was fantastic. First time I had ever rolled with him. Um, you had blonde hair last time I saw you, so this is pretty cool. I was trying to do the uh, Eminem. It looked good. It, it <laughs> matched perfectly. Um, How it, long have you been doing that, by the way? Only since, like, November. Yeah. Nice. I, I, woke, I, like up, I woke up one morning. I'm like, I saw an old Offspring video on Facebook. I was like, Whoa. I'm taking it back. And I looked, yes. at, I looked at my wife. I'm like, you're bleaching my hair. She's like, are you kidding me? I'm like, no. And then I did it. It grew out. I cut it, and then uh, when she cut it, I'm like, we're doing it again. Yeah. like, are you kidding me? So it finally got till January, and she's like, all right, no more. Nice. So Dude, You and Coach Tom posted something on social media about, you know, what's that, Mad Max? And it was like, hey, do, we have to, do we have to wait to start dressing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. when do we start? I've yeah. been seeing that everywhere. I'm a huge Mad Max fan, Dude, so I have all sure. these pages on there. I'm, I'm seeing that on the daily anyways. So then coronavirus happens. I'm like, I already got my outfit. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> we're good. I already got a Queensland healer, so. Yeah, <laughs> nice. We, exactly. We might have a full setup here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we're going to be uh, fighting over toilet paper, though. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I'm, I'm, I'm uh, giving everybody one sheet at a time. <laughs> one sheet on the top of the toilet in between toilet breaks. <laughs> Well, when you guys grab the mic, go ahead and talk and say anything, uh, add to the conversation. Coach Tom's shy, even though he's the most intimidating person in the room 90% of the time. Yeah. So <sighs> what up? He's handing it back. Coach Jason again. They're giving it back. I'm just going to set him up for some talk. Absolutely. Um, Pass the mic to him when you can so they can get a nice, clear response. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you, da, 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 da. Can, you can sit over here and then I'm I'll good use right that. Here. Right. I'm good right here. Coach Tom. <laughs> What's so, happening, sir? What's going on? How you doing? Doing well. Got to train some jujitsu today in the in the midst of this coronavirus melee, but it was good. The coronavirus that causes to close down for a week. Yeah, that's not a good thing, but. Yeah, I think it's a real deal, you guys. I think that the the coronavirus is something that we all need to be aware of, and um, I think that everybody's doing everything they believe is slowing it down. And I don't think I have enough information to really say one way or the other. I'm just kind of following suit and doing what I see is happening, you know, close down, social separation, mm-hmm. um, six feet away from your friends at all times. We did not do that That today. is not the case right now. <laughs> we are in a closed box breathing on top of each other. 
Um, however, you know, we get it, and we have kids within the program, and these kids sometimes go home to their grandparents and to their parents, and we want everybody, first and foremost, to be safe and healthy. And so if that means we close down for a week and record some digital content and then release that online, then that's what we do. I'm totally okay with that. Um, safety first, right? Absolutely. Um, you know, and I think without even necessarily taking into consider consideration, you have the responsibility of being a coach and saying these things like, it's just a great thing that you have that head on your shoulders, you know? Yeah. I mean, Make no smart choice. That was Matt brain that d- just sharded out of my mouth just now. <laughs> Everything just <laughs> fell out like food. Yeah. Don't, I mean, don't get me wrong though. You know, I, safety comes first, but there is a real concern here and it goes across the board. I don't think it's just our school. I think it's all schools, um, in total, you know, um, something like this can devastate the jujitsu community. You yeah. know, gyms can close down from this really quickly. All I, it takes yeah. is one month it's of scary. people to freeze. You know, it's like, I think we had a influx of people that were, you know, initially kind of like, oh man, we should freeze our memberships, you know, and then the reality kind of sets in of we're a small new business mm-hmm. we're a small local business that can cripple you. Um, and that can cripple us. If everybody decides to freeze their memberships or cancel their memberships all at once, we're done, you know, and then mm-hmm. guess what guys, we don't have a gym to come back to. And that's not just here at Gracie Baja San Inez. That's Gracie Baja, you know, this Gracie Baja, that Gracie Baja, that's this Paragon Academy, that Paragon Academy, yeah. you know, the most successful schools in America can close their doors for having two bad months, you know? So in the community, you guys be strong and support your school, you know, whatever school you're at, whether it's Paragon, whether it's Gracie Baja, whether it's um, an Alliance school, you know, Atos, all these different schools, guys, support your school and continue paying your monthly memberships. Don't freeze them. Don't cancel them. Just pay it. Like the schools will invest back into you if they haven't already. Mm -hmm. You know, we as school owners invest in the students, 100%, you know, and this is something that we're going to continue to invest in you guys on, you know, like Gracie Baja has released their online curriculum to you guys, their Mm -hmm. online videos, everything. That's like $400 value of content, 10 hours worth of content plus. I wholeheartedly agree, like, uh, with everything you said, and I, I, uh, I support you and I'm not, I'm not freezing any membership. I'm, I wouldn't uh, let you. (laughs) You wouldn't let me. I wouldn't let you. Hey, uh, I product that they invested in when you initially opened, it's still a product that you're going to deliver. And I think you're doing a great job of communication, letting people know where we're at, what we're doing. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we talked. What do you think? What do you think we should do? Yeah. You know, and the responsible thing to do is follow suit. Let's close down. Let's do some deep cleaning and let's let's reevaluate in a week and see where we're at. But like you said, the bottom line is we're going to be here back on the mats doing what we were doing from the beginning. And if people cancel or freeze, they're not going to have a place to come back to. So... Just stay the course. Don't panic. <laughs> yeah, we'll get through this together, you guys. You know, if you're sitting at home, I'm going to take another one out of a book real quick. Um, you know, if you have your hand, your right hand, hold your right hand out in front of you and then spread your fingers apart. While you spread your fingers apart, each individual finger is now weak. But the minute you close your hand and make a fist, you're now strong. You're united. You're strong. Nothing can break that fist. So if everybody wants to scatter, Scatter, and you'll be weak. But if yeah. you want to come together and make a fist, we're going to get through this together. I love that analogy because uh, you ever try to whack it off with an open hand? It does not. There's no. You're not getting anywhere. You got to close that sucker. That's strength. That's perfect. Yeah. I did set myself up. I thought of that two hours ago when he was saying it, and I was like, I can't say anything. I've been sitting on that one. Yep. <laughs> See, that's where the soundboard comes in. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, funny. but it's true. You guys just be loyal, be be committed, you know, stay true to your school and uh, don't freeze your membership. Don't cancel your membership. We're going to get through this. You know, it's just going to be another bump in the road. Hey, um, Coach Jordan, how'd you get into jujitsu? How long have you been doing this? Oh, this is a good one. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been doing jujitsu for a little over seven years. I actually uh, started. Nice catch, by the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know. That's pretty good. <laughs> I actually started about 100 feet away from where we currently are here at uh, Gracie Baja San Inez. Um, and there was only about six or seven guys. The coach was super tough and liked to show that he had what, an ego. What, what was his name? Um, Justin Tevis. Yeah. That's, and okay. he was a black belt, or he was a brown belt at the, t- at the time out of Santa Barbara. Um, and we, I trained there for about eight months on and off. Mm-hmm. And then... Um, 
I started working in Santa Barbara. I trained at, uh, started training at Paragon in Santa Barbara three mm-hmm. days a week for the last six years. And then, uh, with some of the best crew ever, by the way, yeah. <laughs> no, no joke. <laughs> some really tough dudes in the morning class. Shout out to those six thirty AM dudes. Um, <laughs> they're still doing that by the way. They are. And there's still some tough dudes. I'll still go in there and hurt them though. Um, <laughs> So I stopped working in Santa Barbara and moved back up here to the Valley yeah. and really hadn't trained in the last six, seven months mm-hmm. and uh, saw that Jason opened a gym here mm-hmm. and it uh, ended up working out perfect. So now like, it ain't so difficult now to I'm join. Now i here that. all the time. <laughs> right on, dude. That's awesome. I, cool. I had also started 100 feet from here, um, but just three years ago. So How it, funny. it was a different coach. It yeah. was the Sandoval's, yeah. not not Tevis. So. They, were at the, they were there at the time. Yeah, too. of course. It was still yeah. their gym, mm-hmm. but. That's super cool. Yeah, and that's how my whole martial arts career, like, not career, I don't have a freaking career, I'm not a martial art, like, kickboxer. Yeah. I'm not an MMA fighter, sorry. I, <laughs> I just went right into a, a fantasy land. I was like, oh, in my head, this is where I become a fighter. But uh, anyways. Well, that's not far from what they started doing. I mean, I don't think yeah, it was no, structured no. off of, like, straight no. jiu right? It was, like, no. jiu for MMA. Yeah, like, th- well, it was, yeah, and because they're retired MMA fighters, too, you know? So it it was a whole lot of, like, no gi. It was just no gi, and it was like I I knew where they were going with it. It was what's, a, lot, a lot of wrestling. What's base, crazy yeah. about it too is to know that now three of us mm-hmm. started there. Yeah. I mean, Jason too. He 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 used to uh, do judo with Chantel. Yeah. So that's it's it's pretty cool that mm-hmm. we all come together in the same complex. I like, know it's such a it's trip. So and now weird. it's I've thought about right it a few here. times. I know it's cool. Super cool. Yeah, it's Something pretty special cool. about this little place. I remember I did a judo, my first judo tournament. I went down to LA for the tournament, but I went the night before, and it was a uh, professor or sensei. Dan Aleph was our sensei at the time, and uh, it was me, Chantel, Parker, and Colton Poor, and a couple other people too. But we uh, we slept in the house that was owned by the Guns and Roses, hmm. and they had like a recording studio in the house. It was a huge mansion in uh, LA. And somehow Dan knew the person that owned it at the time, and we got to stay there before the tournament. That was a lot of fun. I remember that that trip. Um, but that judo tournament was tough. So I never got to train. I went over there a couple times. Yeah. I look over there all the time. I'm like, what's going on over there? You know, are they are they doing MMA over there today? Wrestling? Are they what? What? I don't understand what's going on yeah, over there right now. Their but, son's one of the top wrestlers yeah. in the country. Dude, Richie's Richie a beast. Got man. his scholarship to yeah, Bakersfield. Yeah. That dude's that so dude's doing really impressed. good. I've known him since he was 12, 13 years old, and I cannot believe like yeah. that I know someone like that because uh, I'm a fuck up, and he's like someone who's completely disciplined and has yeah. a fantastic talent and super athletic. It's really cool to know people like that, and it's really impressive. And also, it helps me like push myself when I'm doing something like thinking i'm lackluster like oh man like there's so much more potential that i haven't even tapped into because i didn't have the upbringing of having like you know um fighters for parents or having that right really awesome just to just to give him his props yeah yeah Yeah, no he's awesome i think that i I like i like them all i I like Chantel. i like omar i like richie i don't see omar a lot i think omar is just kind of you know doing his wrestling thing right now um you know, 98% of the time. And then the Mm -hmm. rest of the time he's being dad, Yeah, you know, so you really don't see him a lot. I see Chantel kind of going in and out of here and then there and then here and then there. So she's always kind of moving and grooving, but, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, I, yeah, they're good people. Absolutely. Yeah. uh, Jordan started after he went here. Why did you go to Paragon? Right. Paragon. Yeah. So that's like, that's where it was at, man. Yeah. Paragon. Like I started, I started there too. And you know, the morning crew that's down there in Santa Barbara is no joke, man. They're a bunch of killers. Um, you know, I think that when I tell people I spent the first two years of my training underneath people getting smashed and just smothered mm-hmm. you know get, like i tell people i've for every 200 arm bars i've done to other people i've been submitted by 2000 mm-hmm. you know and that's right. probably a real number and that so think about 2, that 37 and yeah. then blow up how many yeah. that's 370 it's done to him yeah. the, the 2000 <laughs> of them came from guys from paragon there's you know? this yeah. huge guy i think his name is john bald guy paragon i ran into him a couple times in lompoc and he, he tried to get me go down to Paragon, but I was like, I mean, I can't just drive all the way down to Santa Barbara. I don't have anything, you know. But I was also really scared. This guy, it was intimidating. 
massive guy came in, grabbed Starbucks, and was like, "Hey, uh, I saw you. Uh, you were in a Harbor Freight. You had that uh, the North American." I was like sweating and I'm like <laughs> panting and I'm like, "You're like the Jiu-Jitsu Federation thing on your." Sure, and he's like, "Oh yeah, probably. I have, I have like a hundred of them." And I'm like, "Oh shit, <laughs> what if it wasn't even him?" And he's like, "You train?" And I'm like, "Nah, not really." And he's like, "What's your name? Come down to Paragon." And I'm like, "Oh fuck, okay, <laughs> maybe we'll see." <laughs> Big, uh, you know, call fire here. I'm always looking, always on the like radar, like especially when I wasn't training, looking at everyone's ears. And you know, it's so funny. I look at people with, like normal ears now, and I'm like, ugh. Yeah. It's a matter with your ears. <laughs> right? But, dude, let's be real for a second. Uh, you can't always judge people based off of their cauliflower ear because there's too many of those videos out there where people are smacking their ears with water bottles, <laughs> you know, trying to give themselves their own cauliflower ear. Really? Yeah, that's... Yeah. Is that real? Oh, yeah. Oh, you d- I bet you we yeah, could, I could pull Jason up a video right is. now. Yeah. I, yeah. That's what I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's insane. I was like, man, why are all my friends getting cauliflower ear and I'm not? I'm going to have to there's grab a water videos. bottle and yeah, there's videos oh, yeah, of it. YouTube. Steve O did it as um, like a stunt on himself. He had really? done all kinds of crazy things to give himself cauliflower ear uh, for one of his, uh, I don't know, last videos or something he did. Dude, it was pretty I crazy. I he would tell me on my ear. I was like, Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> this is the most painful thing. Really? That turns into a headache. Yeah. And then you're like, I can't stop training because it's a stupid little blood blister. Mm hmm. So you drain it, drain it, drain Oof. it, drain it. You train, and when it gets hit again, it's it's awful. Ask you, I mean, Blooms oh, right yeah. back up. It's awful. I, I don't wish it on anybody. Like, and I'm glad I'm relatively done with it. Mm-hmm. Is that why you stopped draining them? Yeah, I I couldn't take it anymore. I literally got to a point where I would have a headache 24 seven. I got sick of draining them. My wife's like, you just pulling blood and fluid out of your ears and. Every day, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. And, like, I'd go train, and the thing would be so ballooned out. And the littlest hit, you'd almost, I, oh, your knees would go weak. Yeah. So, and, and, like, you'd push and push and push it. I stopped draining them. I was over it. And luckily, when I get smashed now, it doesn't do anything. Thank so. God. I'm, I'm nowhere near there. I saw you, you have, yours is starting just a tiny bit right here. Don't say that. My wife will leave me. <laughs> Yo, it was, check it was out. after the competition, dude. I'm going to tell you something real, dude. Uh, Every wife of the jiu-jitsu guy, like, here's how it starts. You know, the wives are like, oh, you're going to go train jiu-jitsu? That's cool. But the minute you go start training jiu-jitsu, they're like, but you're going to leave me here? Like, you're going to go train and I have to stay here? And then, right? And so then, like, they make you feel a little guilty for going to train, but then they get it because then they feel like, okay, you're doing something good and you're happy. Like, you come home to me and you're happier. That's great. But don't ever get cauliflower ear or else you're out the damn door. You're sleeping in the doghouse, right? The minute you get cauliflower ear and you take your wife out to dinner and then you get the look from the guy across the table, like, that, guy, that guy's a fighter. <laughs> and then everybody's looking at you and then your wife is like, what is, what's going on? Like, everyone's just staring at my husband you know like ooh, i kind of like this and then all of a sudden they're like hey babe i think you need to start working on your other ear like you need to train harder right water bottle. yeah or you get the people that yeah, here's a water bottle you get the people that come up to you and they're like are you a fighter the minute somebody asks you if you're a fighter it puts you into this whole new mindset you're like Yes, I am. <laughs> you know how many fights I've been My, in? Your head yeah. gets as big oh, as yeah. your ear does. And that's where cauliflower comes on the other side. Yeah. All the swelling in your head. <laughs> um, I want to find this video really quick. I can't believe that's a real thing. All right. Do you want to wrap it up and let's watch this video? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we can wrap it up or talk smack about the guy who's in the video getting his ear bashed in with the water bottle. All right. I'm going to pass the phone Absolutely. to micro. To, I'm going to pass the phone to microphone over here. <laughs> so first I called Coach Tom. Coach Mount, Mount. Coach Mount. <laughs> and then I called him Coach good. Microphone. That was funny. I feel really bad, Coach. I'm just going to start I calling you Tom. The minute I add Coach before your name, it, th- it throws me off. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to hand the microphone Absolutely. over to Tom. Pass it over. Coach Tom. Yeah. I had a dude on, on an airplane one time. Four rows back go. Mm-hmm. Hey, man. And we're just sitting down. And I'm like, what the fuck? I turn around. The guy goes, you got cough, cough flower, caught a cheese ear? And I, I'm not kidding. And I was with one of my teammates. We were going racing. And I looked at him just immediately. And he starts busting up. He's like, cottage cheese ear. Cottage cheese ear. And the dude was. It's not far off. Yeah. <laughs> That's funny. And the dude was being so loud on the plane. And all of a sudden, 
there's literally 35 people staring at me. It was the first time in my life when I was like, I wish I did not have golf. Dude, could right you now. imagine what these <laughs> other people are thinking? They're like, how dare he just point out someone's poor deformity. physical deformity? There's you know 30. what I told the guy? What? I was born with it. Oh, shit. Dude, you, there was Jason no says he says that to people. I think that's, Dude, you just got to throw that out sometimes. It's if the, enough people. It's the greatest thing ever. It's the yeah. conversation is done. Yeah. It's, dude, yeah. They look at you like, like oh, I'm, so, I'm sorry so sorry I offended you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's so good. That happens with uh, my head. They're like, oh, wow. They're like, what's wrong with your head? <laughs> so big. <laughs> they get caught in orbit. They're like, well, since uh, I'm here, let's talk. <laughs> so I think the guy that put the video out of himself getting cauliflower ear finally got enough shit from other people about it. Yeah. That he yeah, decided really? to pull it down. Yeah. That's Jason's a, excuse for not knowing how to work the internet. That's a good yeah. way to get beat up, probably, too. <laughs> oh, like, yeah. I'll give you some car flurry. Oh, yeah. yeah. I've uh, never. That dude would never live it down. No, he would never live it down. Who'd you guys, do, you, do you guys like MMA, obviously? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, right? David, do you like MMA? Are you a fan? I'm just, just now getting into it. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Just this is all new to it. me. Yeah, man, this is all new to me. This is so cool, this is, dude. I'm all just, of it's new. You gotta go back to the beginning. You watched the you, first. Uh huh. Yeah, that's what you were telling I me. Just, I had a cool yeah, MMA I need to. The Mint 400 a couple weeks ago. Yeah. I was. We were unloading our race bikes to go through uh-huh. tech. Yeah. And this dude, I'm like, we just get my race bike out of the truck. And yeah. Like, how he whatever. Salami talks about unloading his race bike. Yeah, well, same thing. Mid 400. No, I know what that is. No, so, so this dude goes, hell yeah, bro. And I'm like, ah, typical Vegas. Like probably some homeless dude walking down the street, whatever. Yeah. I turn around, it's Brian Ortega. Oh, really? And I literally Damn, went, dude. holy shit. I'm like, what's up, holy T-City? Shit, dude. <laughs> T-City? The best part is I don't nerd out on famous people, but I thought it was pretty cool. I'm like, can yeah. I get a picture with you and yeah, my bike? And he's like, you or, or your bike? And I'm like, no, my bike. Yeah. I know shit. Dude, took a photo awesome. of him with my motorcycle. Hell Not yeah, me. dude! No way. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome, man. <laughs> and then I saw a Cowboy a couple minutes later. Too. Oh hell yeah! Like, but you know he's gonna be there. It's like talking to a rock. <laughs> talking to a rock? Yeah. <laughs> a rock, not the rock. I know. Why? Wait, why? He's just not there. Just not there. Uh, that, just like ju- kind of. Just too many fights, you think? Kind of blew my expectations. I was kinda, oh okay. Kind of hurt, hurting my expectations. Yeah. Now, Jordan. He's like, why am I pointing out? I know, he's like, like <laughs> yeah, but he was, he was walking by, and he's like, damn, damn that thing's bad. Bro. Damn, dude. Let me see. That's awesome. <laughs> I sent it to Jason. Was this yeah. pre-slap or post-slap? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Pre-slap>. <laughs> dude, I'm excited for that Korean zombie fight. I hope that happens. Yeah. I hope they finalize wow. that and make that. He just- yeah, he's just Can good. somebody take a picture of Jason Googling how to give yourself cauliflower ear? <laughs> <No, laughs> yeah. there, there's some funky stuff that comes See, up. The last podcast, you talked about bringing in a camera. That's this is what badass. you need the camera for. Yeah, no, I know. You're right. right? You, you know, I, I know. I totally goofed up because this Total has this has great uh, quality recording. I, I just need to have have it set up. You know, the tripod would have been perfect. I didn't even think about it because we have Matt Brain. Dude. Yeah. Sorry for changing the topic real quick. No, it's you fine. want to talk about something crazy? Yeah. Let's talk about this. Uh, the, I don't even know how to say her last name. Uh, John, oh, John, uh, oh. Jedrick yeah, that was w- versus Zhang Weili. Zhang Weili. Bro. Weili Zhang. That forehead. <laughs> Did you guys watch that fight? No. The greatest, it's one ever. of the it, best it was, like yeah, MMA ever. fights ever. W- gender regardless. It yeah. was. Uh, it did was not stop fight. the entire time. It, it, it was fight. amazing. It reminded me of the Stefan Bonner. Oh, yeah. 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 It, it was the Back female the equivalent yeah. of that, at 100%. least. Did you see that video, David? I watched that fight, dude. Actually. Nice. Dude. So I stopped buying UFC fights. Uh, thank you, Ronda Rousey, because every time I'd buy them, they'd be like five seconds, seconds long. Oh, could, I was just like, I'm done. I'm it's done, it's UFC. Like a Tyson yeah. fight. Yeah. yeah. You don't buy the Tyson Everyone fights. get all pissed but, and right. finish in round one. Speaking so. of that, remember when he came back against Peter McNally? How many millions and millions of dollars that make? I'm not. What, 46 seconds? <laughs> did, did you guys see... Bad, have you seen her pictures afterwards, though? Yeah, though, like the, now that she's the, kind of it, it now looks like she has like a, a mud mask on from yeah. the bruising. No. It's, Dude, her it's face so is weird. Like purple. It, it, she hasn't she, taken a clear photo, and she was already trying to cover it up. Yeah. Like after you know, she knew the memes were coming. I was making memes in my head. I was like, we got Elephant Man, during we got Predator. Fight. During the fight, I was like, <laughs> yeah. holy shit! And then it, as soon as as soon as I went online, they were already there, and I was like, damn it, I could have friggin' capitalized on that. Uh-huh. Got some meme clout. 
<laughs> you know, I kind of actually get personally offended when people put memes up of the guy that what they call him what, Elephant I Man. Know, that's kind of like I grew up as a kid and I watched that movie as uh-huh. the mo- like that's what my parents made me watch Rocky to Johnson teach me that Rocky, um, uh, you should never. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the, yeah. The mask. The mask. That's what it is. The mask. That's right. Head share and um, that. My my parents made me watch that movie to teach me that you know whatever we look like on the outside, we're still all the same on the inside. Um, Oh, way to bring it to your movie. Right? Wow. Have you seen that? What? Uh, you know what? No, because I saw the Sorry, joke Joanna. on Family Sorry, Guy Joanna. when I was a kid, and I was like, ah, "That's all I need to know. That's good." Uh, yeah. Way to bring the wood down, Jason. All right. Well, let me find a picture of your <laughs> yeah, face. Let's, let's, don't tell everybody he dies in the end. Yeah, don't do that. Fuck, what? <laughs> now I don't need to watch what it. What about the movie Powder? Yeah, I've seen that. That's, That's a, good, a movie. good movie. Yeah. Who, you know, wait, hold on. Who is, who is the star in that movie? Because I think Patrick Flanagan. I don't know. Because I think he is also a black belt in G, uh, BJJ. He owns Hollywood, G, B, Hollywood BJJ. You know who just got their freaking black belt? The kid. Was it? Oh, uh, I know you're talking about. I just saw that. Um, um fucking with uh, the kid from Sandlot, right? Was it Sandlot? So that kid that's all yoked now, the Stuart Little kid. Yeah, it's Stuart Little. That's the one I was thinking yeah. of. So yeah, so Stuart Little belt. kid got his yeah. black belt. Like yeah, holy shit, nice. what a trip! Yeah. Wow. He's like, I'm sick of people making the yeah. mouse movie reference. I'm done. I'm choking fuckers <laughs> out. It's over. Send him to Gracie Baja San Inez. <laughs> I want to train with him. You know, if you're a celebrity, my hat's off to you for training jiu-jitsu, 100%. Sincerely. But sometimes, unless you're Keanu Reeves, I feel like you need to train with the members as well. I don't. I mean, if people are looking at you like they want to eat you, yeah, probably shouldn't train with those guys. He said, but, unless you're Keanu Reeves, because the fucking wallpaper on my laptop is Keanu Reeves. <laughs> no, Keanu, well, Keanu Reeves, Keanu Reeves and Ryan Reynolds are like my two go-tos. They're like, don't. Don't mess with those two guys. They're they're my man crushes. Coach Jordan, Coach Tom, thank you guys so much. See you guys uh, tomorrow. Thank you for training. Training? Yeah, let me know if you guys train. Yeah, I'll text you guys and let you know if we're training. Thank you. But uh, see you guys. Oh, they're fun. I'm glad I'm glad they got to jump in. Yeah, I wanted them to get in here. I I don't get to see. Uh, Did I fart? Jordan enough. No, there's like Are you blind? There's a fly. Oh. This fly's been fucking with him. I'm I thought like, I, I smelled smell bad. bad? No, he must. me, obviously, and this fly's trying Ooh. to get at me. I'm ready to go shower. I can feel, I yeah, can feel the I'm corona. Let you guys go. my wife, I'd be home at four. Yeah, I, I, yeah Bro. My, I said five. <laughs> David, you're not going to be able to coach for me anymore. Seven. No, she's fine. I, I sent her a text. I was like, uh, we're recording a podcast, so now I have any. An excuse not to answer. She's not going to listen to this. She's not going to listen to this. Don't say that, dude. Yeah. That's what I think, and then... My girlfriend Kylie, she always comes at me with like, "Hey, uh, so something about last episode." She'll hear something and yeah. she'll listen to him like a week after the fact, and then I got to answer for something. And I'm like, "Oh fuck, was I joking or was that real or what did I say?" Or- Coach Jordan's wife works with my wife, so she's gonna oh, listen to no. it. It's, it's gonna come full. It's gonna be in trouble. Absolutely. So, um, we good? We getting the red lighter? No, we're good. She's okay. just telling us, you know, we're all good. We're stinky we're and three good looking men. Yeah. Um, Sean Patrick Flannery was yeah. the star, and he is a black belt. He owns Hollywood Jiu Jitsu down is in from, LA. Uh, boondock? Yeah. 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 Right yeah. yeah. Uh, well, at one point in my life, I wanted to be a boondock saint. I was like, that's what Absolutely. I want to do for a professional career. You know, um, maybe I shouldn't say this, but, uh, uh, it'll happen one day. Um, my dad, like sincerely, all he's ever wanted to be my entire life is some sort of boondock Saint John Wick character. Like I, uh, all of my, uh, <laughs> sensibilities in action movies and like vigilantism is like embedded deep down, uh, all this, you know, post-apocalyptic or this apocalyptic, like pandemic, like everyone's freaking out coronavirus stuff. Like all of that it was like, I remember being five years old. My dad showing me Red Dawn, and he's like, "Son, shit goes down. This is what you need to do." I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm five. You've been training it's, for this your whole life. Yeah, absolutely. Terrified. Well, <sighs> I don't have Matt Brain anymore, so I'm fully clear. Yeah, um, me too. I feel like Dallas I cleansed go, myself. Yeah. Do you right. mind if I just say a couple things real quick before we end this episode? Haven't you said enough? Never. Yeah, please do. Put a microphone in my hand. You think I've said enough? Oh, fuck. <laughs> all right. Um, um, sorry sorry for all the beautiful folks in the Midwest that I cuss so much. Um, Jason, take it away. Yeah, quit cussing, Dallas. I, <laughs> it's like quit breathing, Dallas. It's like quit touching your face. 
<laughs> Nobody can touch your face. Nobody can not touch your face. Um, you guys, the coronavirus is a real deal. The COVID-19 thing. We don't know the extent of it as far as what it's capable of. We do know that, you know, for the older population, it is causing some issues. And um, it's still very new. I can't give you more information than you probably already have. But as far as the closure here at Gracie Baja stating is, it's important that we do everything we can to keep you guys safe and healthy. A lot of the kids here in class go home to um, their parents or their grandparents, and some of you guys might be susceptible to this virus. So we just want to minimize... Um, the spread of it as much as possible. And that doesn't just go for Gracie Baja San Inez, that goes for Gracie Baja worldwide. We as a organization are doing everything we can to prevent the spread of this disease faster. Um, we want you guys to be safe. We want you guys to train. We're doing everything we can to make that possible. And that's why we're going to be releasing the online material for you guys. And we'll be doing some virtual classes for you guys as well that you guys can watch at home. Not all jujitsu requires physical. It's also mental. So use this time to train mentally and then get ready to get back to a physical training session here soon. We'll keep you guys updated as much as we can. And as we get the information coming in, we'll deliver it out. If you guys have any questions, you can always feel free to reach me out here. Reach out to me directly at the academy, or um, just come by. Other than that, we're good. I think I'm good. I've touched on everything. Marcio, sorry, Dean Lister, credits yours. Hmm. If you don't like me, don't listen to me. Fantastic, Jason. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. I hope I can come back one time. Yeah, absolutely. One time, multiple no, times. No, multiple. Yeah, multiple times. Please. Absolutely. Your voice is perfect. So if yeah, you have we'll a good see. Voice, you can talk, we'll see. You can All right, guys. Well, uh, this has been another edition of the Map Brain Podcast. Uh, keep on rolling. Hey, hey, hey.